guys, today it is Vlogmas Day 7. I'm here with a tag video. It is the Reader Problems tag. I don't think I was tagged by anyone, but it's created by About to Read. I've seen a lot of booktubers do it. I just thought it'd be fun. There's 11 different questions. Let's begin. Question number one, you have 20,000 books on your TBR pile. How in the world do you decide what to read next? I tried doing the little TBR jar for a while, but let's be honest, every single paper I pulled out, I just didn't want to read. So some of you are very like committed, like, yes, I have to read it because I pulled it out of the jar. But I just, no, I didn't want to read it, so I didn't. It didn't work for me. So I just read what I'm in the mood for. I'm lucky to have a really awesome library so I can just walk around and just, I will be able to find something. I also have books here that I need to read. So if I'm in the mood for a fantasy or just real life, just contemporary or romance, or I just, I never really know. Question number two, you're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? And I quit. <laughs> I'm a quitter. Too many books that I want to read and if I am hating a book, I put it down. And I didn't used to be like that. In fact, maybe up until just a year ago, I would always commit and I felt like it was just such a crime to not finish a book because I thought, you know, what if the ending gets better? But if you're 50% into a book and you're hating it, mm -mm. I guess the only time I really stay with it is if it's a series. I read the Summer Trilogy by Jenny Han and I really enjoyed the first two books and then I started reading the third one, did not like it but just continue just because it was a trilogy and I just wanted to finish it. And by the end, I really did like it. It got a lot better. But the first like 100 pages were terrible. <laughs> but it just really depends. Question number three, the end of the year is coming and you're so close but so far away on your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up and how? I personally don't really care about my Goodreads reading challenge. I just do it just because I think it's fun just to see how many books I've read because I don't really keep track in any other way besides Goodreads. So I really like to go on the stats and see like how many pages I read and I think it's just really fun. But no one's gonna be like mean to me if I didn't read you know, however many books or something. It doesn't matter. I actually haven't looked at my account so I don't even know what I'm at. I know I have more than 70, I think. I think the last time I looked at it was at 70 books. So I think there's m I'm more than that. But yeah, I just, it's, I mean, if you are really concerned about it, I would say pick up graphic novels and stuff that you can read really quickly. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Question number four, the covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? I don't really have that problem because I usually wait. So I never bought, for example, Anna and the French Kiss and Lola and the Boy Next Door, the hardcovers, because I really wasn't a huge fan of them. And then I found out that the paperbacks were coming out. So I was just patient and now I have those and they all match. Um, the Shatter Me books, I hated the cover of the first one. I have that paperback. I just never bought it because I didn't like it. And um, I waited and got those. Uh, the Lux series, I hated those covers, so I waited, hoping maybe they'd redo them, and they did, so I bought these, which aren't the best, but they're a lot better. My problem is paperbacks and hardcovers. My, I have so many trilogies and series where the first book is paperback, and then the rest are hardcovers. So I've got the selection right there, the selection is paperback, and then the Elite and the One are hardcovers. I've got Mash right there, Mash is paperback, and then those two are hardcovers. Uh, same with Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Same with Anna and Lola are paperback, but Isla is hardcover. Same with Divergent is paperback, but Insurgent and Allegiant are hardcover. It drives me nuts. I hate it. So one day when I get the money, I'm going to replace the paperbacks with hardcover versions. And I don't know what I'll do with the paperback versions. But yeah, it drives me nuts. I So I don't cope. I'm just annoyed every time I look at it. Question number five. Everyone and their mother loves a book you really don't like. Who do you bond with over shared feelings? So that's pretty rare that I don't really like a book that everyone loved. Um, I guess that makes me just sound boring that I just only love like the really hyped popular books. But it's so, I mean, so far that's just how it's been. I love a lot of the popular books and the series and stuff. I'm trying to think of one that I didn't really like. I didn't really care for Beautiful Creatures and there for a while that was like talked about quite a bit. But I already knew so many people that also kind of agreed with me that it was just kind of eh. Like, you know. Who do you bond with over shared feelings? Whoever on booktube, because that's who I talk to about books, is people on 
booktube so whoever also didn't like it booktube is growing booktube's huge now so there's gonna be at least one other person that also didn't really like it so i'll just seek them out and i'll watch their review and i'll comment and tell them i feel the same or i'll go on goodreads and find someone I don't know. Question number six, you're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public. How do you deal? Anymore, I don't really read in public. I used to, but anymore, I just wait till I get home and so it doesn't really matter. But used to, I'd read in school and stuff. And yeah, I, I would just kind of have to stop reading. I would just kind of have to stop reading and just be miserable until I could Get away from people because I mean in school I don't want to be sitting at my desk crying and looking like a crazy person. True story, I think I've told you guys this before. So at my university I go to I was in the dining hall and I was reading The Fault in Our Stars for the first time. This is before booktube so I you know had never even really heard of this book. I just picked it up and didn't know it was gonna be sad and I was sitting by myself eating and this guy came over to me. So let me just reenact this for you. Uh, excuse me. Yes? If I were you, I wouldn't read that book in public. Uh, what are you... Okay? Uh, okay. Honestly, I, I'm just minding my own business and he tells me not to read the book in public and walks away. It freaked me out. Thanks, random guy in the dining hall for saving me some embarrassment. Question number seven, a sequel of a book you loved just came out, but you've forgotten a lot from the prior novel. Will you reread the book, skip the sequel, try to find a synopsis on Goodreads, cry in frustration? So if the sequel comes out and I've forgotten, I either look up my review, if I have one up, my discussion, and I rewatch it, which may sound weird, but it like will, you know, jog my memory. I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember. Um, I'll go on booktube and watch other people's videos. I'll go on the Recaptain's website and read their little synopsis that they have about it. Or I'll just reread the book. It just really depends on the time I have and stuff. Question number eight, you do not want anyone, anyone borrowing your books. How do you politely tell people nope when they ask? Luckily, I think people have just like started to get the hint that I don't like people taking my books so they just don't even ask I have a couple close friends that I now lend out my books to and they've you know brought them back and they were in fine condition but I don't really think I've ever even had a bad experience where someone's borrowed it and then never gave it back or it, they gave it back and it was terrible so I'm really really lucky but I've heard so many bad stories about it that it makes me nervous. I don't know how I would tell someone I guess I could maybe tell them about the library and it's free there and they should just go there. Question number nine. You've picked up and put down five books in the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? I've never really had that where I've picked up and then put down books because I don't feel like reading. If I'm not reading, it's just because I'm watching Netflix or doing something like that. It's not usually that I can't find a good book because I can tell you right now, I've got at least 30 books in this house that I haven't read yet that I know I'm gonna love because 99% of all my friends that I usually get like recommendations from have loved that book and I'm probably gonna love it too. I really, it's not hard for me to find books that I like. I'm pretty easy to please. I give out those stars like there's no tomorrow. So how do I get over the reading slump? I turn off Netflix. Question number 10, there are so many new books coming out that you're dying to read. How many do you actually buy? Nowadays, like none or like one of them because I have been so good and my last, like the last few months, I bought like three books and that is so good for me. I'm so proud of myself. Give myself a pat on the back. I've been going to the library and I've just, I have such a big TBR pile that I'm content with what I have and I don't want to buy anymore. I think the last book I bought was like an ebook because it was like a dollar. But before that, it was Yes Please by Amy Poehler. I had to have that. Question number 11, the final question. After you've bought the new books you can't wait to get to, how long do they sit on your shelf before you get to them? And the answer to that is a very long time. A very long time. It could be over a year. It could be a month. Uh, it just really depends. But that's another reason why I'm not really buying more than like one book at a time because then I'm way more likely to read that one book. Whereas if I buy like five, I may read one of them, but the other four are going to sit on my shelf for a year. So 
yeah that is it for this video i tag each and every one of you to do this if you want to do it you should do it just tell everyone price won't tagged you i'm gonna go i hope you enjoyed this tag tomorrow I'm gonna have a video with my little nephew Connor again. So I will link the video below if you missed it, but I did an unboxing with him. It was a duck and goose unboxing. So we're gonna do something sort of similar to that tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. It'll be a giveaway again. And I love you guys. I will see you later. Bye.